When it comes to the Pokemon series, one of the things that stand out to me the most are the spin-offs that come out every now and then. And among the best of them, in my opinion, are the ones that came out on Nintendo 64. And my favorite out of all of them has to be the one with a concept that sounds kind of stupid on paper, but in execution is an absolutely fantastic and underrated classic. So if you haven't guessed already, or if for some reason you haven't read the video title, this review is dedicated to Pokemon Snap. I got my Pokemon shirt on, I got my Pokemon socks, and now I'm ready to take some pictures of Pokemon. The main premise of Pokemon Snap is that you must travel throughout different landscapes and take a bunch of photos of Pokemon for a report that Professor Oak has put together. Like I mentioned, kinda sounds dumb on paper, but the execution! I don't think this review will do it justice, but I'll try. So like all the other typical Pokemon games, you start off by naming your character whatever you like, but if you're like me and prefer the actual canon name, it's Todd, who by the way did make appearances in the anime back in the day. So Professor Oak greets you and tells you all about the Pokemon report, accompanied by some great music and voice lines. That's another thing. The sound design is one of the best aspects of this game. The sound effects, Professor Oak's notable quotes, and the music, all of it is great. So now you're ready to go on your first run, but not before jamming to the level select music. Anyway, to the beach we go. Yes! So starting off, you're immediately shown how to take pictures three different times with three different Pidgeys. The controls are straightforward and easy to get the hang of, but one thing I find unusual is that the control stick controls are inverted. It's similar to the controls in games like Pilot Wings or Star Fox. You can set it to normal on the options menu, but it's strange to have reverse as the default, don't you think? From the starting point to the goal gate, you take all the pictures you can of every Pokemon you see. You're given 60 frames each run, and while it's a good idea to use them sparingly, it's honestly not anything to fret about. The only way you'd really run out of film is if you decided to go ham with the cam and spam the button. At the end of each stage, you pick the best photo of each Pokemon you've seen for Professor Oak to grade. He determines how good it is by size, pose, and technique. Basically, he's looking for close-up and well-centered pictures of Pokemon, and they have to face the camera too. But if you mess up, it's not all bad, because at least you get to hear Professor Oak say, You are close! You can also save the pictures to your personal Pokemon album. Here you can view your photos, and also write creative captions for them if you please. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock new stages and the occasional new items used for Pokemon interaction. Apples for feeding them, pester balls for bothering them, and a Poke Flute for waking certain Pokemon up and getting them to dance. These items play a role in another big aspect I enjoy so much about this game, puzzle solving. Like here for instance, near the end of the tunnel stage, there's an Electro just chilling by a pile of rocks. You won't be able to do anything the first time you're there, but once you get the apples, or apple-shaped Pokemon food, you'll find that you can make the Electrode self-destruct by hitting them with one, and hitting the one by the pile of rocks results in a new path opening. What the f Let me tell you, seeing that as a kid was a mind-blowing phenomenon, and judging by the look on Todd's face, I'd say it was to him too. Each of the levels bring on their very own unique and fun experience. The volcano level has fire Pokemon like Vulpixes, Magmars, and even a Charizard that appears when you knock a Charmeleon into a pool of lava to evolve it. Oh yeah, Moltres also makes an appearance. The river has shelters and Poliwags jumping out of the water, Bulbasaur's hanging out, and Slowpokes you can evolve by getting them to dip their tails in the water for a shelter to bite. The cave has several Pokemon such as Grimers and Dittos, and there are three Jigglypuffs being harassed by coughings, and if you choose to save them, they will perform the Jigglypuff song at the end of the level. Which for some reason doesn't make Todd fall asleep and cause him to crash the Zero One and fall to his death. Okay, that was a bit dark. Also, if you want, you can throw a Pester Ball to make him mad. <laughs> Last but not least, the Valley. This is probably one of the best levels. The pace at which you travel is constantly changing. One moment you're just cruising along, then suddenly you're going down some crazy rapids. 
and the Pokemon you find here are pretty good, and some of them allow for some excellent photo ops. This one also probably has the most secrets out of all the levels. For example, you can get a Magikarp to evolve into Gyarados by knocking it out of the water with a Pester Ball, which you have to be quick about because it only jumps out for a short time, and then it appears later near a waterfall. Throw another Pester Ball, and BAM! Gyarados pops up, letting out the same roar as Bowser's Taunt in Melee. And at the end of the level, there's a secret exit. You get it by pesterballing a Squirtle at just the right angle to hit a Mankey on a hill. Then you hint the Mankey to knock it back and hit the switch. The gate will open, and you will meet up with Professor Oak, who then proceeds to tell you about the Pokemon signs, which are landmarks in each level that are shaped like different Pokemon. Finding them isn't super challenging, but it's still pretty fun to do, especially when you're given the ability to fast travel after you're meeting with Oak. So after finding all the signs, which two of them require the flute, so you have to get that first, you unlock the final level, Rainbow Cloud. Here, there is only one Pokemon, the legendary Mew. In order to take pictures of Mew, you must break its barrier by repeatedly throwing pester balls at it. In a way, it's kind of like a boss fight, which is actually a pretty neat touch. Unfortunately, in this playthrough you're seeing, the pictures I managed to get were pretty crappy. Even what I thought was the best of them got hammered down by the dreaded You were close! But hey, it's all good, I beat the game. Overall, Pokemon Snap is definitely something worth playing, and I encourage you all to try it if you haven't already. It's available on the Wii U eShop, which is probably the easiest way to get it, unless you don't own a Wii U. The replay value this game has is definitely through the roof. Even if you beat the game fully, you can always replay the levels and take all kinds of pictures. Like all of the different Pikachu photo ops, like Surfing Pikachu, Balloon Pikachu, Pikachu on a Stump. This game definitely has it all. I could even consider it more enjoyable than any of the main Pokemon games. No joke! And one final note, we need a sequel. Badly. Please, Pokemon Company. I know there are almost 900 existing Pokemon now, which means you would have to do a lot of condensing in order to make it possible. But I'm sure you guys can make an awesome sequel regardless. I don't know what I'm saying. They're already sleeping on it. And when I say that, I mean quite literally. It's such a shame. Pokemon Snap is such a wonderful creation, and there's even a big fan following. I mean, check this out here. This guy, hat-loving gamer, made three videos of fan-made Pokemon Snap levels. You can tell he put a lot of heart and soul into it, making it shine brighter than gold and silver. I'll provide links in the description for you guys to check it out. But until next time, this is Beneficial Gamer, signing off.